What's up, everyone? Hope everyone is doing amazing today. So today I want to speak about why your products are getting sales, but they aren't profitable. So have you already been in a situation where you're getting sales consist consistently with a product, but it's not profitable, not profitable at all? And you're like, maybe it's not a winner. But in most scenarios, it could be a winner. It's just that you have a few mix mistakes that you need to resolve down the line. So what are those mistakes and what do you need to resolve? So when it comes down to dropshipping, only one error can make you lose the chance to find a winner. And today I'm going to explain what to do uh, to not miss out on that winning product. You know, that's why I want to tell people to learn about dropshipping and not just testing blindly those things are very important because a lot of people would test like 60, 60, 70, 80, 90 product and they're like, yeah, I haven't found a winner. Well, you probably did find a winner already. The only thing that he didn't find is um, basically how to increase the profit of that winner or how to resolve the problem that that winner has. Because at the end of the day, yes, there's some products that you can have a very crappy offer, very crappy landing page, and it will give you money, obviously. But those are big, big, big winners, and you don't encounter them really often every single week. You know what I mean? They're kind of hard to find, but there's other type of winners that will give you 10K, 20K, 50K, 100K in revenue easily, but you just need to tweak a few things. So there's four points that you need to look for in order uh, to, to make sure uh, that your product becomes profitable. So the first thing is your page. So your product page, you need to look at your product page. Do you have great quality pictures? Yes, you have great quality pictures. Perfect. Do you have a great and simple description? You know, a lot of people think description is easy, but it's actually very easy. But when you know what to do, um, you know, a lot of people when they come to me now, now, now with the with Chat GPT, what's mostly happening is that they try to go with fancy words and hard to, uh, to understand description. No, all those things are unnecessary. All those things are necessary. You need to make sure that your client understand properly what you're saying, and you need to use simple words to understand. You know, that's the thing with Chat GPT. People want to speak like lawyers, doctors, and uh, have all those fancy words, but it's not necessary. You're just overcomplicated, overcomplicated things. You want to make things as easy to understand as possible. You don't want to make things hard for your customer. The easier, the better. Sometimes, also on your page, you have a lot of products. Uh, you haven't resized any photos, so you can have a very low-speed page. And that could hurt you as well. Or what could happen also is that you have too many pop-ups. If you have too many pop-ups, then people are just going to, oh, let's look at this, let's look at that, and it will not end up purchasing. So please, Make sure that you have a simple page, easy to understand, and with no pop-ups. And you should be good to go when it comes down to the page. The second one is your AOV. So your average order value. So in terms of average order value, you need to look for, okay, I'm getting profit. How can I, or I'm slightly breaking even, how can I do in order to make more money? Let me add different bundles. Let me add different, uh, you know, upsells, cross sales. You know, if you're selling um, a winter ski suit, let me sell them uh, a hat, like a warm hat or, or a, a warm beanie or a warm scarf, something like this that people will end up purchasing and it won't cost you a lot. A lot. Think about it. Let's say one out of two people or one out of three people purchase your ski suit. And one, all out of those one out of three that uh, purchase, they end up purchasing a Benny or a scarf. A scarf on AliExpress, a good scarf will be $5. Let's say you sell it for $30. You just made $25 extra with that client. That's one out of three. So let's say every three clients, you make 25 bucks. It doesn't seem much, but when it comes down to, let's say, 100 orders, that's 30 orders out of those 100. And 30, 
you know, times 25, that's already 1,500 right there. So I believe it's 1,500. So that's an extra 1,500 just by having an upsell. And again, email list. This is the time where, you know, when I tell people keep everything simple and don't overcomplicate, that's what you should do. But when you see you're making sales consistently, your product is in a balance of it's profitable, it's not profitable, and you don't know when, when you should cut it, then what you need to do is you need to increase your chances and increase your average order value, and you'll be more than profitable. You know, one thing about um, PS4, so, you know, PS4, they don't make money on the PS4 itself. They make zero, they're actually on a loss on the PS4. But why are they selling the PS4 on a loss? Because they know that when they sell a PS4, people are going to buy one, two, three, up to even 10 games. So they will make the money back and they will have subscription. They will have everything. They will do everything on their PS4. So when you think about it, okay, they're losing money in the front end, but on the back end, they're making so much. So that's what you need to do. The third one is simply your offer. Your offer is not appealing enough. Probably that you haven't priced properly your product. Probably that you haven't done, you know, a bundle offer. Okay, buy one, buy, uh, yeah, buy one or buy three and get the third one for free. Something like this. A few tweaks like this will make sure that 30, 40% of people converts more, increase again your AOV and you'll be way more profitable. So think about simple offers that are not too complicated. You know, all, all of those people, they want to create like those crazy offers. While people are used to simple offers. So if you make simple off offers that are easy to understand, then you should not have any problem at all. And the final one, it's pretty evident, pretty simple to understand. But I think people are not focusing on those very much. And it's the visual, the image or the video. So if you have an image and you're advertising uh, to people, just make sure that the image, it's easy to understand. You know, the biggest error with people, if they sell a product with image, you don't know what the product is. It's hard to understand. When you sell with an image, you need to make sure that it's easy to understand. Easy and clear and crisp. 4K pictures. If you could could not have those type of pictures, then I would just move on from the product and go to another one. Same thing for the video. The video, you want to use it when you need more explanation, more explanation and more convincing. When people probably haven't seen the product or don't even, even know what it is. But again, you don't want to make a five minute long video that is not you know appealing to watch. You want to make it quick, simple to understand, and showing all the angles possible. So people will know, oh, this is what I'm, I'm, I'm buying. And make the purchasing experience as fast as possible. What do you want to do? They see your video. They see your image. They understand your offer. They see uh, the text. Perfect. They go on your website. They look around a little bit. The reviews, product bait. They don't see anything. Boom. They end up purchasing. You know? One error could lead to a person not buying. So let's say you have a big mistake in front of your page. People are like, oh, what is this? Oh, I don't trust this brand anymore. So you don't want to put any doubt. So the more things you put, then the more doubt could occur. So make sure there's no doubt that will occur in that funnel and people can purchase, you know, with a smooth experience, with no lag, with simple description, with simple offers. That's it. You don't want anything else. So yeah, guys, those are the things that you need to do when you have a product that is making money, well, that is making sales consistently, but is not profitable. Again, if you have done those four things, it just means your product, it's a leftover product. What's a leftover product? It just means a very good product that has been scaled highly and very profitably for someone else that is probably dying and you just have the remaining orders. How do you know if it's a leftover product? If you do those four things correctly and you see no improvement. If you see no improvement, I will doubt it. You should see improvement. But if you don't see some, then I would just move on to the next product because there's just 
so many products out there to test. So yeah, guys, this is the video for today. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to watch my brother's video. We make 30 videos every single day for you guys. And we try to show you what's inside of our mind because that there's actually one thing that people can never steal from you and it's knowledge. And we're giving you that knowledge basically for free on YouTube. So I wish you all an amazing rest of the day. Take care and peace out.